Good evening everyone and welcome to the Insomnia 51 recap video. Uh, so, my original plan was to take Hawk, the microphone, the webcam, uh, down with me to Insomnia. Um, but then, more or less, two major things kept coming up. The first was that there was some weird bug with Hawk's hard drive, which means that he pretty much always has little if any memory left on his main OS drive, which makes it very difficult to record with him, or especially edit. The second thing that came up is that we were very tired when we got back to the hotel room. Like, our, our hotel was about an hour away from the uh, the arena, so consequently, we always got back very late at night, and we always got back very tired. So, I was definitely in no mind to actually do any, like, day-by-day -day recordings. Hopefully, I'll have something sorted for the next time I go to a convention, but... I did take a bunch of quick little videos throughout the days, and I do have fond memories to share with you. So, day zero. In other words, the day we actually got there. Now, we left Middlesbrough just past 2pm. Uh, we went by coach. Uh, there were a couple of delays, so we spent about the next seven hours on that bus, and they rarely opened any doors, and no one moved. And we were sat next to Luz, and for some unknown reason, the driver never engaged the air conditioning. So, it got very aromatic in that bus, very quickly. Um, but eventually, in the late hours, we did actually arrive in Coventry, although we did initially mistake it as being a different part of Middlesbrough, because it turns out they share a bunch of names, so we were confused. But we did manage to get a taxi to the hotel, where we checked in, and got our rooms and probably collapsed. We didn't get any chance to check in at the actual arena because it was so late at night by the time we got there. I think it was like either 7 or 9 p.m. So there was just no chance of getting to the Rico and actually checking in. Which brings us then quickly to day one. Mostly, I spent this day just getting the lay of the land and exhibits. I had my first chili dog and I'm really not sure why Sonic the Hedgehog loves them, but it was an interesting experience, to say the least. Messy, certainly. Uh, saw a ton of cool Minecraft statues, including a dedicated photo stand with a pig, a zombie cow, and an iron golem, and stood next to it was the looming figure of the most colossal Enderman I've ever seen. <laughs> I think this guy's may have been scaled down and up a little bit. It was a bit wonky, but well. Uh, I also met up, I met up with the Dragon Hat, and uh, took him on his first trip to Frankie and Benny's, along with uh, Mikachi and the Bit Monkey. They had food, I had a short a strawberry shortcake Sunday because I'd already eaten the chili dog and I was still quite full from that. But after that, closing up the day, I grabbed a new blue shirt, which I believe I have back here. Yink. Uh, from the Gaming Legends stand. Come on, unfold them, thank you, please. Yes. There we go. It would have been nicer if they had, like, a, a blue engineer statue, but nobody has blue engineer statues for some reason. And... One new hat, because this seems like the kind of event where I just have to have, have to get some kind of hat. So... Meow. Totoro, and he even has his the typical two little, like, badges that for some reason I always attach to my hats. So here we have Geek inside, and free hugs. I didn't give out many hugs at the convention, but it was nice to have it nonetheless. It's also a really big hat, like it's ridiculously loose on me. But anyways, day two. Mostly, we investigated the Nox Crew Game Show area, where they had basically the whole build from the Nox Crew Game Show, and people could uh, come in and in like team-sized units and just run through the whole thing. It was fantastic to see. Uh, there was also the adjacent Tony Zone, where they played... Hearthstone, all manner of things, it was really fun to see. And on that note, there was also commentary and various matches all throughout the day at the exhibit hall stage. I didn't spend much time there because it was sort of an anomaly of a large directed seated area in the middle of the exhibit hall. It was a little weird, but it was also right in front of the parkour and walls and stuff uh, that was going on. Um, Monkey went, I believe the phrase is ham, on some pork at the photo stand. And I also, oh, I'm talking about possibly one of my highlights of the entire convention, I grabbed a new Mewtwo shirt from Game Tea. So, let me see about that. Yep. It pays to be a little bit prepared. So, yeah, that is artwork by the amazing AJ of Game Tea, who actually, very fortunate for me, also threw in 
the art print edition. So I'm gonna see if I can find some place that I can hang this up. I almost feel like I should frame it, but heck knows I barely have the funds for that. But yeah, that is lovely. Thank you very much, AJ from GameT. Check those guys out at gamet.co.uk. Uh, let me see, after hours, we all tried out the racing simulator stand, which was nigh untouchable. Um, also, it turns out that it is really, it's a lot harder to drive, like, one of a racing game when you haven't played one in the better part of 20 years. Uh, so I didn't do fantastic, but I learned the significant trick of the walls tend to follow the direction of the track and your car is invincible. So, <laughs> plow forward tweak your landing and it'll figure again. Uh, we also messed with some RC drones, and I did get, I believe there's a clip, probably right next to my head, if not above it, of the uh, the finalized scoreboard that we had from that little event, and uh, you may see So Totally Toby bottomed out completely. He actually got about a full four seconds slower than the absolute slowest person they'd had the entire day there, so it's unfortunate for Toby, but hey, he's now immortalized. Uh, late at night, we went to the world-famous, or so I'm told, Insomnia Pub Quiz as a team return to sender, and many a paper airplane was just, was uh, flying around destroying many a boost tower, because they were a little slow to start. It's a new venue, so they're a little bit uh, dancing on their feet. Day 3, uh, I mostly checked out Ace of Spades, which is a game that I should really try at some point, because it looks interesting, if nothing else. And I've seen a bunch of my crackers do it as well. Um, their, their wall of the indie zone was more or less entirely occupied throughout the entire event. I also encountered the elusive Predicted Cyborg from gaming radio site Sanitarium.fm. You can easily recognize her by her bright red band hammer, and indeed that is what I recognized her by this time, because she was apparently running around I-49 as just an average member of the public, not unlike myself. Uh, this time she was press. Uh, but she was running around getting everyone she could to sign her bright red band hammer, and the one she had this time is actually an exact duplicate, but not signed at all. It's more just indication of, hey, I'm here. Uh, she's really cool. You should really check out Sanitarium. I highly recommend it. They have some fantastic music going on. Uh, I focused on the indie zone quite a bit more. Uh, really enjoyed a bunch of games, including Paperbound, uh, Fortress Craft, and there was another one, it was Tiny Keep, which is a really fun looking game I might give a look later on. Um, after that, the meet and greet creeper was signed by basically everyone that was walking past, and unfortunately, there was a case of theft. The Splemmy booth was robbed of its only demo device, so they then had to put up a little piece of paper that said rather dejectedly that uh, some mean person had stolen the phone that it was installed on. So I never got to try out Splemmy, but it looked cool. Uh, Spectra was still running, and we had to drag Mikachi away from it a few times. Uh, but that was the fairly slow ending to the convention, because we then move on to day four, which is more or less a continual blur from bed to burrow. Uh, <laughs> I, thought, I, I thought waking up that we were leaving much, much later in the day than we actually were, so I had literally 20 minutes to pack up everything and get to the bus. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, we then spent a good five hours on the bus, less time than the first time, thankfully. Uh, before we finally hit Middlesbrough again, and I got here and got my proper cup of tea. Oh, that's always fun. But, uh, anyways, sorry I wasn't able to give day-by-day -day plays. I really would have liked to do, but we were just so shattered, and we, the, the internet at the hotel was absolutely dreadful. I think it's the first hotel I've ever seen that actually, well, attempts to censor the internet. I was able to get onto YouTube, it, like, it was weird. It didn't block, like, the domain at all. It just didn't, it just blocked the main page for some reason. So if you already had a tab open to YouTube, you can get anywhere in YouTube from it. It was bizarre. But anyways, uh, that was Insomnia51. Uh, thank you to everyone that came out to see me. Uh, I still don't get why you do, but thank you anyways. And uh, hopefully there'll be one nearer in the future where I can actually do some more interesting stuff. We'll see. There's a bunch of stuff that I'd like to like pitch to maybe multiply, but we'll see. I'm not going to mention any of that because it will inevitably not materialize if I say it. But anyways, that is it for now, so I shall catch you all next time. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and or a favorite. Follow me on Twitter and subscribe to be notified of future updates. You can also check out the website where most other content is uploaded. That's all for now, catch you later.